just gonna let the tear drop because it's all natural. When you when you cry, it's natural from heat. Hey, what's going on everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we welcome Action Bronson back to the hot seat. He's a rapper, TV host, chef, and New York Times best-selling author. You of course know him from his show, Fuck That's Delicious. Only for Dolphins is his album coming soon and to hold you over this single Latin Grammys is available now. Bam Bam, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much, sir. It's so, I'm so happy to see you. It's good to see you too. How are you feeling going into this? You've done this a time before, but are you feeling a little bit nervous? You feel like it's old hat? Where are you at? Nah, everything is, it's always new hat for me. I like it. I had some jerk chicken earlier preparing myself. I ate a couple habaneros. So I think I'm ready, I think. I've learned that you have to humble yourself in these situations. I love this label. It's a great label, by the way. I like to buy hot sauces and all kinds of different, different paraphernalia by the labeling. Yeah, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like craft beer that way. For no sure. Way. So I like the the funkier the cover, the better. So I'll be using. I'm not gonna lie. I'll be using grilled chicken because I'm off the fried things. I'm going to imagine crunch. Mm. I love that. You could drink that. Mm. A lot's changed since I saw you last, but the most obvious thing just looking at you is this physical transformation that you've made over quarantine, losing close to 100 pounds. I see you on Instagram doing dumbbell presses and flipping tires. Do you have specific powerlifting goals or is this all about making healthier lifestyle choices? It's all about healthier lifestyle choices, but I like to use the, the exercises and the, and the stuff that I like to train. Weights could get boring, you know? But when you flip a tire, you add a couple of different things, a circuit, you do something right after it. it it's just a, a, a more fun and interactive way of training. And it's just crazy that I had 100 pounds to lose in the first place, and I'm still not where I want to be. But that's my fault. I did that. Your music video for Latin Grammys has that trademark throwback action Bronson appeal with these strongman competitions and retro footage. Who's your favorite strongman of all time, Phil Pfister? Well, Phil Pfister, he won that one year and he, he won every event. He's probably one of the only strongmen in history to win every single event. My favorite is Marius Pujanowski. I study these men. I, this is something that I've loved since I was a child, you know? It's something that always stays with you. It's like baseball cards. It's like playing Mortal Kombat, watching World's Strongest Man. This is how I know about the world. Yanni Virtanen, Yuka Hola, you know what I mean? Vasil Virastruk. <laughs> <laughs> This is beautiful. I like green hot sauces. You gotta get a good spread. It's like wine, you have to kind of aerate it, you know? You have to aerate it, you have to add a little air to it. We'll see how long you can keep that going. Yeah. Mmm. Some tomatillo action in there. It's really good. So on last week's episode, Adam Richman named you as the food guy with the most credibility within rap. And the thing that I've always loved about Fuck That's Delicious is it's a show that allows the fans, the viewers, to go on a trip with you to all these globe-trotting adventures. Where have you had more memorable culinary experiences, Tokyo or Paris? Oof. In Paris, I've done things where I've, you know, I was a headliner in front of 50,000 people in a park and immediately I got off the stage and got into a cab because they didn't have my van ready for me and I had no time to waste. So I got in one of those very little egg cabs. I had a suit. Why? I'll tell you. 
because I went to a three Michelin star restaurant called Epicure. It's brigade service. It's like old school French service. 20 people coming, you know, you bring chickens inside of the stomach of a pig or some other shit like that. Very, very, very ancient menu, but unbelievable. Which is the superior American food city in your opinion, New Orleans or Chicago? Ooh, fuck. They're both a 10. They're both a 20. They're both places that you need to go immediately. I'm just so sorry that that one Hot Dogs is no longer there. You know, Hot yeah, Dogs yeah. was a legendary hot dog place in Chicago. People would wait five hours online for those things. And I got to taste every single one of them. Oh, what a treat. I used to live a few blocks away from there, so I'd see the line out there all the time. You could get like a rattlesnake hot dog and stuff. I had the forbidden one that was the foie gras. It was forbidden yep. at a time. He wasn't allowed to serve it. So that with the duck sausage was very memorable. And it was like a, some sort of French sauce on there. One of those mother sauces or a derivative of. I like the viscosity of this one. It's a creeper, it's more sweet. You know that's the flavor of habanero right there. It gives you that sweet and then that little, that little creep. I like that. Lyrically, you get a lot of credit for your vivid food descriptions and obscure sports references, but one thing that goes a little bit under the radar is your clear and obvious love of film. From mixtapes inspired by Dr. Hannibal Lecter and Blue Chips to 90s classics getting name-checked in rhyme. Are the Star Wars films overrated in your opinion? On Live from the Moon, you rap, fuck Star Wars, Indiana Jones is better, bitch. It's true, it's true. I I've. I don't think I've ever, I mean, I have watched the Star Wars all the way through, but that's, a li it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit too kiddy, you know? I understand the realm and the, the mind that it had, it took to create that. Yeah, I understand it. I get it. It's just not as riveting to me as Indiana Jones. You know, Indiana Jones is just better to me than Star Wars. In my world, it's a fact. When you say, why the fuck would I have a bodyguard if I look just like the motherfucking bodyguard, are you trying to say that you have some resemblance to Kevin Costner? <laughs> well, that, that's really deep right there. Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. And, uh, and I, I will oh. That's one of her best performances ever. No, but bodyguards, they're like fucking schlubs sometimes, you know? I'm saying I look like, you know, this guy that we were with in Australia when we went on tour with Eminem. You know, like some fucking jacked up English guy that's low key. And then finally, is someone who's name checked Big Trouble in Little China and has a song called Sylvester Lundgren, is there a tough guy movie you suggest everyone watch during quarantine? Yeah, Only the Strong Survive. Parana way, parana way, parana. It's a movie about Capoeira, and it, the dude, you know, it's like a school teacher, and then he has to fight one of the student's uncles who's the drug dealer, and he always wears like crazy cowboy boots and slacks and like a really tight shirt, you know, with a ponytail. And the he tail does, is old as time. And they do Capoeira, which is like Brazilian dance fighting. I think that that's one of the best movies ever. Also, it's not a tough guy movie, but you should watch Side Out. You got a Reaper on the cover, and it's only number four? Hell yeah. So on your White Bronco tour, you completed more than a dozen watercolor paintings on the theme of weirdos across the country. Are those based on real people? Because I swear I did see Ben Franklin in one of them. <laughs> yeah, that was actually Buffalo Bill. But yeah, definitely, I mean, went across this country and you see some creep shows and some amazing looks. You know, if you have a look, you have a look. You could be in a Calvin Klein thing. You could be in this type of thing, whatever. Those were near and dear to me. That was my first show I've ever done. Like art wise, I actually show, I showed those at my man Jeremy Fish's um, gallery in San Francisco in North Beach. Um, yeah, man, that was fun. I sold a couple of them. I gave a couple away, just good times. 
What do you say to people who think that abstract art is just squiggly lines and paint splatters? The way that you throw the splatter, the movement of your hand, the movement of your elbow, all these things could be deemed art if you capture it in, in the right way. It's, you know, it's all subjective. Anything that moves you is art. I like the color, I like the smell. Mmm. Some sweetness. Mmm. Hell yeah. We have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive on our guest's Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. So okay. I'll show you the picture. Tell you me. Just tell us the bigger story. Do you have a favorite memory from doing CC Sabathia's celebrity softball game at Yankee Stadium? Wow. That's me. I don't even want to say that. You know what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> yes, I have tremendous memories from that. As a matter of fact, CC Sabathia, good friend of mine, is the one who got me hooked up with the guy who I train with now. He's the one who got me into the gym. So I, oh, that's awesome. I, I accredit him with helping save my life, you know? I gave up a crazy home run to Andrew Jones. I got Gary Sheffield to pop out. I make a ridiculous athletic play off the mound, throw the ball sidearm to Mariano Rivera, who's playing first base. Gary Sheffield with that stance. You know, staring down the barrel of that stance must have been something. Yeah, it was. he had a cigar in his mouth and he was wearing jean shorts. <laughs> As a connoisseur of natural spirits, what's the appeal of natural wine to you? And then can you recommend some bottles for those of us who may be new to the game? The appeal of natural wine is that it was explained to me in a poetic way. This, it, it was the introduction, to be honest with you. You know, I'm not a, I wasn't a big wine drinker. I don't like traditional wines. Even the biggest wines that are the most expensive, it's tainted because it has sulfites and different additives to elongate its life. Natural wine is exactly what it says, natural. The people who make it are artists and their whole mind and life is all about making natural wine in its purest form, using nature only. Air, grape, ah, that's it. It's really the human factor. I love meeting the people. I love knowing the stories behind it. I love seeing the vineyards. You should just go to your natural wine spot. You should go to my man, uh, Discovery Wines in New York City, call him up. You know what I'm saying? Just be like, listen, Bronson told me to call you. I need some help. Ask for Trevor. Those were actually two bottles of natural sake. You have to get into it. You have to like get a little conversation going, then dive into it. All right, action, careful around the eyes. Are you ready to move on here? Yeah, don't Back you half. worry. Don't you worry about these eyes. These eyes have seen some stuff, my friend. This one is a dark one. This is like that Henny. But you know, like in hot sauces, they can always be just one note, bland. But when you burn the chili, it gives it that, that earthiness, that nuttiness that I look for in a hot sauce and in life. You can taste the fire in that one, mm -hmm. you know? It immediately sets your hair on fire. So you've always been a multifaceted entertainer, but I don't think even you could have predicted speaking roles in two of the year's most critically acclaimed films, The Irishman and King of Staten Island. How would you compare the experience of working with Judd Apatow versus Martin Scorsese? They seem to be complete opposites in the way that they operate, but I'm sure that there are character traits that run through both. Yeah, I mean, with Judd, it was just like comedy on the scene, on the set, you know, just like, they would throw you some lines and you'd say some crazy stuff. You'd do it a couple of times, do it a couple of different ways and be crazy. Watch it back. There was a lot of people on set watching back, you know, while while it was going on and laughing and they would they would really get they would get a feel for everything from their friends and stuff like that, from the people that were around. As opposed to Marty, he just told me, go ahead, you got this. Gave me a hug, that was that. He directed me like I'd want to be directed. And then De Niro, I fucked up a couple times. He goes, listen, kid, you're fucking everything up. What are you doing? I thought he was serious. I was like, well, I'm sorry, man. He's like, ah, come here, you fucking asshole. I'm just joking with you. So that type of thing, that really, you know, boosted my confidence. I saw Pesci at the end, I almost cried. Just because I love my cousin Vinny that much, 
It's one of your favorite movies of all time. 100%, 100%. There's no doubt about it. And the, the irony of that is that Marissa Tomei was in King, King of Staten, Staten Island. My dreams are fulfilled. Don't fucking cast me for anything ever again. I'm done. Thor's hammer. Mmm. You know, it doesn't pack that much of a punch. It's nice, though. Damn. It's nice. Salute. So I know that you're a big fan of Mick Foley, a guy who inhabited entire personas like Cactus Jack, Mankind, and Dude Love like he was a method actor. Dude, it's like Daniel Day-Lewis. They take their shit real serious. They're not breaking their shit, you know? Uh, you know, I, I was scared of The Undertaker when I was a kid. Um, I'm just gonna let the tear drop because it's all natural. When you, when you cry, it's natural from heat. It's your body's mechanism for cooling itself down. Randy Savage captured me because he was so intense. You know, with the wild antics and the wild talk, the way you, he never broke it. That's who he was. That's a man's man right there. All right, are you ready to move on? This next one is the bomb beyond insanity. I believe you've had this one before. It has a fucking nuclear bomb on it. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. I can't wait to work out after this. I feel like I'm in a sauna, but a good one. You know, like an Arabic sauna. Gotta get a good dab on there. Don't be a fucking baby. Mm. All the hot ones have that initial, like, you wanna jump out the window flavor, kinda, you know? It's uh, immediately repulsive. Yeah, that was hot. That's burning my esophageal. <laughs> so I don't know if you've kept up with the headlines, but recently the Pentagon declassified footage of military encounters with unidentified aerial phenomena. As someone who was able to turn their passion of ancient aliens into a full-blown TV show, is there an archaeological discovery or an unexplainable structure that fascinates you? What I learned was when I was in Kosovo that they found something crazy over there. It's called the goddess on the goddess on the throne. And it's this little alien-like subject that they just found. So that they find it in every corner of the world. It's not, it, this world was one piece at one time, broken up. Ah! And now, <laughs> that's a creeper, huh? Yeah, yeah, and it is relentless. <laughs> Just shake it out. And I'd like to let them know that we're waiting for them. All right, well, hopefully they're watching this episode. They are. Action, are you ready to move on to the next one? I am. The Mono Loco out of Costa Rica. Woo! I gotta fucking blow my nose real quick. I'll be right back. Shit done got hotter. Woo! Cheers. Ooh, uh... Oh, man, that fucking smells like pizza sauce. It doesn't taste like pizza sauce. No. So I know that you're making healthier lifestyle choices these days, but do you have a recipe yeah. for the perfect Action Bronson quarantine sandwich? I like turkey on my sandwich. So I, the other day I roasted up some turkey breast, paprika, a little garlic powder, black pepper, salt, rub it real good. A lot of olive oil roasted in the oven at 400 for an hour and a half, two hours. And you have a beautiful specimen ready to, you know, work. Lay it with some of the juices, more olive oil, a little more salt. A good Pullman bread, you know, like a good, like, loaf. I don't know why this shit gives me a fucking lisp. What, is this supposed to give you a lisp? I don't know, we're in uncharted loaf. territory. All right, so yeah, black pepper mayo, nice. Schmear avocado on the other side. Sliced red onion real thin. Turkey. 
dress some greens with some olive oil and some lemon, a little salt. A roasted pepper, red, yellow, green, whatever. Some pickled jalapenos, lime juice, a little oregano and salt. Then cut it up real nice. No cheese, just like that. Trust me. My plate of hot sauce is art. Looks like a Jackson Pollock from where I'm sitting. It is. Cheers, my bro. Thank you for having me back. Cheers, Action. Thanks for coming back. Of course. Last dab, soaked. A little more for fucking good measure. Oh. Very Caribbean. All right, Action Bronson, here we are at the conclusion of your Hot One sequel. And we've touched on your many talents and interests, but one thing that we've missed is Billy Joel. He's sneakily one of the most beloved artists in hip hop. And I love that story about you and Mark Ronson sending that handwritten note to Billy Joel so that he'd clear the sample for Zanzibar on your song, Brand New Car. In as much detail as possible, while you're smoked out in more ways than one, why is Billy Joel, in your words, the greatest lyricist ever? Well, listen, you know, I have had a change of heart recently. Not recently, but the motherfucker played games with me, man. He was supposed to uh -oh. bring me out at Madison Square Garden. He was going to do Zanzibar and then go into my song. He, they contacted my people. This is all guaranteed and this is all facts. I went on Boomer and Carton in the morning. It's a New York City fucking radio show, sports show. And I was so excited, I mentioned it. And what do you think happened? They, they pulled the off. They pulled the fucking rug from right under me. <laughs> How do you think I feel about Billy Joel now? I haven't listened to him since. You feel spurned. I like do. You just ate, I'm like you scored. just ate a wing with the bomb on it. That's probably how it feels. No, but obviously he's an amazing lyricist, man. Uh, you can never discredit his lyricism. You know, he brings you to a place of familiarity. We've all been to certain places that he's taken us, you know? That's, that's why he's who he is. Under the hottest hot sauces under the sun, Bronson, cool, calm, collected, the second time around. And now, my friend, there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you, Action Bronson. This camera, or possibly a camera B, if you've set one up, let the people know what you have going on in your life. Shit, I have so many things going on in my life. I just had a baby. I just lost so much weight. I'm working out like you can't believe. The tenacity that I show in the gym is beyond. I have a new album coming out called Only For Dolphins. New single out right now called Latin Grammys. I made a cologne. I have an ice cream that's coming out called Only for Dolphins. I also have a wooden toy that's self-sustainable and good for the earth. I also have all kinds of other products that I'm not gonna just keep mentioning. I paint, I'm gonna have an art show soon. I'm just happy now. I love everybody, Sean, you're the best. Thank you again for having me. Hot Ones, Familia, Por Vida. You already know, essay for life. I wish I had a tank top on so I could show you these fucking guns. I like, this was still my favorite flavor. That last dab reminded me of the jerk that I made earlier. It was really good. It has some nice allspice notes in there. It's Caribbean. So I, there might not even be allspice in there. Maybe I'm just fucking lying. But I'll tell you this. This is a really great array. This is a good diverse bunch of hot sauces to really take it up someone's ass. Hey, what's going on Hot Ones fans? This is Sean Evans checking in with one camera guy. How you doing, Steven? You good? Good. Steven's good. There's no one else in this building except for the two of us. It is locked down over here, but you know what? The Pepperdome is open for all new episodes of Hot Ones, the game show, Tuesdays on True TV, the Pepperdome. See you there, if you dare. <laughs>